Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. It's time to take global stories making headlines in our national dailies. And joining us to review the papers is Chris Kendi Wandu. Um, good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. It's good to be back. How are good you to be morning? back. We've missed you. It's been Thank a minute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this morning we'll be starting with the punch, and the punch leads with smuggled Nigerian petrol floods West African markets, sells for 1,700 naira per litre. The writer here says petrol hits 1,672 naira per litre in Bene, Cameroon 2,062 naira, Liberia 1,428 naira, and Mali 2,128 naira. Now, 28,000 litres intercepted in Adamawa, Sokoto, Kebi, Katsina, Bornu, Taraba, and Ogun. So there are reports that people have been smuggling um, petrol into other um, West African countries. And so sometimes when we have scarcity, this might just be the reason. And for people who are even selling as high as 1,500 naira in Nigeria, that's because they know that when they get this product, they would rather sell it for a higher amount in other West African countries. What do you think about this? We are still looking on how to get ours. We're importing fuel for ourselves, but then they're still being smuggled. What do you think about the fact that it's been smuggled one? And then our borders that are so porous that, you know, they're being allowed through there. Yes, um, that should be, uh, that question should be, uh, should be directed at the uh, part of our security agency. Because yeah. It is their duty to, um, to be able to man the borders. It's not my duty <laughs> to man the borders. So, it is their duty. So if Nigerians are still smuggling uh, such products across the border, then that means that there is a problem with our sec national security. And that in itself, we are just talking about petroleum, but that has always been the uh, situation because uh, it's not just petroleum, it's through this part also that you see people bringing in arms into the country, uh, which they are using to destabilize the country. It's this through, through this route that you see a lot of Im immigrants coming into Nigeria unchecked. Um, most of them have become bandits, uh, terrorists, um, and the rest of them. If you go into our forest, you see the number of uh, nationals from other countries um, occupying those forests and kidnapping. Uh, just also some that happened a few, uh, few days back, where I think it was in a two state that was uh, raided. And um, they said that a particular set of people from one of the West African countries uh, were there that have been kidnapping Nigerians. So it is. Um, it's not just about petroleum products, uh, but also uh, about our national security. What about food? Food items on a daily. If you go to most part of the north, uh, heading towards the border, on a daily basis, you see um, all these trailers fully loaded, fully loaded trailers, uh, making their way uh, with food, making their way um, to other parts of uh, West African countries with food items that are not even available in Nigeria and are very expensive. But it's, at times, you also look at it from the point that these people are also try to maximize profit. Uh, they think that they are not getting enough profit uh, for their goods and services in Nigeria. So they believe that the only way to be able to do that is by um, very indeed uh, across the border. But the issue and the problems less clearly on the part of our security agents. But the question you ask yourself, how many security men do we have? How many people do we have in the immigration service? How many LDDC, LDDI, it was a problem that this uh, uh, defense, uh, uh, yes, uh, the, uh, the defense corps, how many do we have? How many uh, people do we have in the, in the custom, both of the Nigerian police? So, until we have enough, and I've said it time I can do by it's, it's not just putting uh, boots on the ground. What we need to, our, we have to be technologi technologically driven in our manning our borders. Most of the things, that we do manually across the globe are done through technology where you have a, a proper mapping of your borders then you use drone to be able to um, man those borders and be able to effectively see what is happening because you can be in the company of your office and um, be able to see what is happening within the border but our borders are so porous we don't even know how many borders we have apart from the major ones we have we believe um, the, uh, we've had time and time again that Nigeria has the, the highest number of porous borders across the globe. But it's not only Nigeria, even the United States are issue of border. If you see what is happening 
between the Americans and Mexicans currently, where you see Mexicans flooding the United States through certain parts of the United States, um, leading to the president of the United States, um, Joe Biden, um, putting up a law against such. But my own question is that we are not doing enough to man our borders, and that is why we're having this problem we have. This and time and time again has been, you remember, this is part of the reason why our government raised the prices of fuel when they say they remove subsidy. Oh, the reason why we have to remove the subsidy is cheaper. Our petroleum products are cheaper across the border in other countries. So when we do that, it would um, stop um, 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 all the smugglers from the better desktop. At this stop, no. Um, our secretary just have to do enough to be able to make sure that most of these things are nipped in the bottle. If we don't do it, then we continue to get the kind of result we're getting. We also uh, have this uh, story here about um, uh, minimum wage. Today is Tuesday, and uh, there's a possibility that uh, NLC might just wake up and say that we're going on strike because uh, seven days have, uh, will be over today, or they're they already over Perhaps. today, is, uh, yes. Labor insists on 250,000 Naira awaits Tinubu's verdict. NLC, um, the writer there is saying NLC president berates governor, says president will do the right thing. 250 as against 62,000. Uh, we were just laughing here earlier on with Rume when somebody said that uh, 60,000 is the amount that they want to pay. 2,000 is for POS charges <laughs> that they just added to it. So what do you think about this? Today, there might be strike. They may or may not be strike. We're waiting for the uh, president's approval or not, or otherwise. But what do you think? 250. And then if you move over to the Daily Trust, um, Labour has already said they would not accept 100,000 Naira. Mm -hmm. So they already have a, like a figure that is the benchmark for them. So they want 250. The federal government is saying 62. But even if the federal government decides to say 100,000 Naira or 105,000 Naira, like we had um, from certain reports last week, they're saying they would not accept that. Well, the one week... Uh Grace given by the labor to negotiate the federal government um, has lost. But labor good enough has come out to say that uh, they are not going on any strike yet, uh, but yeah. that they are waiting on the president. The president of NLC is presently in Geneva, where he's attending the IO, ILO um, conference, the uh, National Labor Organization Conference in Geneva. So um, he has come out to say that uh, they are not going on strike, so they are waiting on the federal government. And um, so, and the report, the tripartite reports on um, on the minimum wage uh, um, was said uh, to have been ordered to the president that um, um, news coming now from the president said that the um, president have not received that report but I hope that within the next few days they'll be able to get that sorted. Uh, about labor uh, insisting on 250, uh, let's be realistic, uh, my sister, my brother. I personally feel that that is not possible. A state that cannot, most of the state that cannot pay 30,000 naira presently mm -hmm. Uh, how could they be able to pay 250? About close to about 17 to 20 states presently cannot pay 30,000 naira as many more would. I personally don't believe that they don't have the money. They have the money. The governors are getting about three times of what they used to get in the past since the removal of subsidies. So any governor that says he cannot be able to pay a certain amount is deceiving himself. After all, the governor of Edo State, which is not one of the richest states in Nigeria, have come out to say that he's going to pay 70,000 naira. And I mentioned that about two months ago. And uh, I'm sure he has been paid. And uh, if you look at also the lifestyle of our governors, uh, most of the chief executives of the state, and uh, for them to come out to say, no, they cannot, let them remove from the money that they are talking about by this so called security post that they are talking about, that they are providing no security. If you see how much this, uh, you see how much these governors are, are, are spending. And then, so if they reduce the cut, they are so called the security boots and so much money that they are spending on their lifestyles and that of their family and their heirs, then they'll be able to uh, be able to pay some of these bets. Realistically, personally, I don't see any state paying 200,000 naira. And there was a time that um, it was said that 150, uh, 105,000 naira was recommended by the uh, by the Minister of Finance, but that was quickly denied. The governors have come to have to say that uh, 62 is too much for them to pay, that they cannot pay it. Um, the federal government, the last time they offer labor, they offer 62,000. So I believe they are going to be, personally, my personal opinion is that, yes, not as much as for creating a federation, I think that we need to tinker with the constitution, allow states to pay what they can pay. That is my personal opinion. 
Uh, yes, in as much as the tripartite um, uh, agreement between the federal government, state government, as well as uh, the local government, and um, even the uh, uh, private sector, states, uh, a state like mine cannot be compared to, Imo state cannot be compared to Rivers or Aquaibom or even Lagos states that get so much money every month, either from fact of international IGR. So if a state like Lagos can say they can pay 100,000 naira, can the Imo state or even Cross River states? Yeah, no, Cross River have money. Let me not. Calm down, Chris. Calm down. That's a civil service state. There's no business in Cross River state. So your state can pay. So, but what I'm saying is that I believe that it's better that uh, we'll be able to be able, be able to take out the cost so that we can allow states to pay because they are the employers of these uh, people. They know it's between you and because it is what you can pay that you can say you can pay if you are paying you now. It's just like me employing you. Uh, okay, let me just take for example what is happening. Let's look at the plus TV. Plus TV have decided to employ you and offer you something. Somebody, uh, Ratau. I think, that, I think that is yes. Ratau. That said, oh no, it's more minimum you can pay that plus TV must pay. Is that plus TV agree to pay or they don't agree to pay? The other subsequent consequences is downsizing. Yeah. But I, as I said, Sunday, there is no state that can presently cannot be able to pay the minimum wage. So anybody that is not able to pay thirty thousand naira or forty thousand naira, so I said I already paying forty thousand before the why this this negotiation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the fact is that our governors, as it were, because we are positioning ourselves too much within the center, we're looking at the federal government. Have we asked ourselves okay, governors cannot be paid? What level of development is going on in the state? Nothing is going on in the state. They are practically doing nothing. But the local government, nothing is happening. Apart, they were far from collecting from fact, they were also put the money for the local government and spend it anyhow they like. So, uh, but I hope and believe that within the next few days that the government will be able to agree on and then um, they uh, come to a compromise. And um, uh, I think uh, wisdom should be able to be paid. But as it is now, this so called 60,000 naira, which as a naira POS said, uh, will not take anybody home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, let's talk about um, state police. So, Southwest Governors Forum insists on state police elect Somo Luth as chair. Um, uh, this is on the punch, and we've talked about this several weeks ago, talking about the state police and, you know, what they can possibly do for us because they know the terrain, um, uh, having, having to be able to mingle with the locals policing will just be better or our security forces will be strengthened. So now the Southwest, Gov the Southwest Governors um, Forum have also insisted on this. What do you think about this? Do you think this is where we have to start to champion this, to say, yes, state police should be done in Nigeria? Yeah, the, um, um, Governor Sorolu picked up the chairmanship, rotational chairmanship of Southwest Governors Forum. Yeah, it's normal. And um, it, the, that position is rotational from one uh, one of one state to the other, it, it, irrespective of the political meaning. And uh, I like the politics that play in Southwest. Southwest seems to be, uh, with my own thinking, the most matured politically when it comes to short politics. So they have a way of resolving the issue. And you talk about, when you say Southwest um, is advocating for um, uh, for uh, state police, they already they already gone ahead, far far ahead. Um, to uh, to try to initiate that, you see what the, the Amateko as we have it now yes. can be directed uh, to state police. If you understand what I mean, mm -hmm. in as much as it's type vigilante, but they already laid the foundation. So if it's approved, um, if uh, the law is passed, so they will find it very easy for them to integrate those into those um, Amateko into the. And the same thing was supposed to happen in Southeast where I come from. You remember the Bubago um, issue and where the Southeast. Um, governors also agreed to set up uh, a vigilante group, but you saw what happened to that. Uh, it was politically motivated. The governors were using it um, to which uh, most of their opponents. And that is one of the reasons why those against the issue of state policing um, are against it, because they believe that most of the governors were hijacking and use it for personal vendetta. But that is neither here nor here, because the correct police, uh, police uh, structure we have cannot take us anywhere. Practically, we have nothing. I don't think we have more than 350,000 policemen uh, within the force. That is, let us even put it 500,000 mass. 500,000 policemen to over 120 
million people. That is costly inadequate. Secondly, they just they have just had a recruitment. Uh, I, I think about ten thousand was recruited and it's going to be used into police. That so if you say it's five hundred, five hundred and ten thousand, that enough uh, with a high level of security uh, insecurity across the land. And it comes to just as rightly said, it is only a practical that it is somebody that knows a place that can be able to police the place. When yeah. you send somebody from the north to my remote village in uh, Ogo, in Imo State, and he's telling me to come and police my where does he know? All the Koro and the uh, Apia way in my village, I know it. I can, can, people can pass from one foot through the bush. Some people can walk through the bush for the next five hours. Mm. And you not see them on the bush. You understand what I mean? Yeah. But uh, the police are coming to my village because not know those routes. So criminality can be... And also, most of the, the people you are they're taking as um, members of this, um, what they call the state police, know some of these people, they know it's people that they live with and they know their activities. So I still believe that the state police uh, is the way to go. Um, but I will be able to make it in a way and manner that state governors will not be able to hijack it for their own personal interest is what we should look at. But whether the debate on state police is necessary or not, it is far necessary. If you look at the level of insecurity going on in most part of the country. Look at what happened in the South a few days ago, uh, where soldiers were killed. And you also look at uh, some of the reports coming from the North, that ISWAP had was having a, 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 a daily meeting uh, uh, on, on, on the, on the, just within the public view. People just see them. ISWAP, a terrorist group. If you look at the kidnapping, banditry going on across the country, they will know that it is very, very uh, necessary. I just came back from a foreign country, and I realized that each, each local government, each local government has their own police system. In those, in those places, they don't depend on the federal uh, system. Local government, uh, uh, what you call council, they have police. They have police. even campuses, university campuses have what you have all their own local police. So that, so, so you see that they have effective police system that committing crime. Not that don't, crimes don't go back. If a crime is committed, within the first, the, is, you see that that can be solved. Look at what happened in uh, in uh, Abia State. We have two ladies have been missing for five days now. Yeah. Since now we don't know what happened to these ladies, and it's just today that we to look at the, uh, the IGP set up a, a panel to start looking at that issue. That will not happen in, in other clients. So our policy needs to policy system needs to be strengthened so that uh, Nigerians can be effectively. Police and with the rate of poverty, poverty going on across Nigeria, there is always the tendency for people to um, go into crime because that is the only way they can survive. So we need to be able to have a good policing system that can be able to need. Added to that is also what I mentioned before: technology. Technology. We have to invest so much in technology because crime is just go crime prevention um, goes beyond just having policemen uh, having K47 or uh, all this. Uh, uh, see, uh, whatever they can, this button they go around. Technology has taken uh, taken the next level where you can be able to forestall. Because what we do, what we do here is to go after criminals after the, the crime has been prevented. Each policing has gone beyond just apprehending, but prevention. You can be able to prevent a crime from being, taking place. Then it makes it much easier for 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 security agencies and for the society as it were. Okay. Well, uh, you just talked about the um, increase in criminality because of poverty, and uh, that just um, made me look at the headline, Hoodlums Jump Fence, Steal Salah Ram in FCT Council. I was just laughing about that. Is the criminality you're talking about. But um, that was it. that's in uh, Daily Trust. But uh, we also have uh, uh, what is on the Nation newspaper, alleged 400 and, um, no, rather, Nigeria conducive for business, Edun tells multinationals. On the point you have, what is um, the CBN governor is saying that federal government's debt with uh, uh, two point or services debt with two point two billion dollars in five months. So federal government is doing a lot to service the debt, and then uh, is assuring uh, the f finance minister is assuring the multinationals that Nigeria is conducive for doing business. From the trajectory of seen of our economy, do you think it's going to the uh, place where we can confidently uh, talk the way the finance minister is talking to the multinationals that our, uh, our environment is conducive for business? 
Uh, well, uh, every government can pass it that. And, um, uh, but for, it, for your uh, country uh, to be conducive for business, that's how it is you have to place. First and foremost is the making the business environment very friendly. Uh, if it's not business friendly, then it's difficult for anybody to be able to invest, for an investor to invest. Second is also, when I talk of um, uh, making it friendly, you have to tackle the issue of power. Uh, what is our level of power? Uh, we are we're just only between 4,000 and 4,000 and um, 10, 20, uh, 4,200 uh, uh, megawatts of power for a nation of over 200 million. When a country like South Africa, that is just um, uh, uh, with far, far lesser uh, population, is doing over 50, uh, 50,000 uh, megawatts, and there's still not even enough for them. And uh, so, uh, those are the you have to have the basic infrastructure to be able to attract for your investment. Second is the issue of security. Nobody will come and invest in a country that is not secured. My lives and properties are also you continue to see the manner of killings, kidnapping, abduction going on on a daily basis, unabated. So, it will be very, very difficult for any foreign investor to want to invest in, in that country and uh, on a stable economy where your, your currencies continue to uh, uh, fluctuate uh, like Dido, uh, Dodo every day. Uh, today is 1,400 to a dollar. The next one is 1,500. At times, you move to 1,900. There's no stability within the economy. So it also it doesn't uh, make planning uh, effective. So, but definitely, if, if we get our, uh, our, we get our, uh, our self right, Nigeria is a very, very big economy should be the biggest in the whole of Africa. And anybody that can come here to invest should be able to have uh, his or her own ROI, a return on investment effectively. But even the airlines that have been flying, the foreign airlines, you see how we have been owing them. They, are, they cannot be able to remit their uh, ticket money. It is just of recent that the foreign government was able to clear that backlog. Um, a long time, they are finding it difficult, which is why one or two airlines refused to fly into Nigeria. So we have to make um, the uh, economy very, very uh, friendly uh, for people. The president has taken practically half, half of his time in the past one year traveling from all parts of the world to attract uh, businesses. But has that yet any, any, any fruitfulness? Is uh, that uh, I really doubt. We have seen how so many multinational companies are crumbling down. I'm moving to even countries like uh, like Ghana, Angola, Rwanda, and the rest of them. That is not good. But I feel the basic thing is for us to have to get it right. Uh, the government is trying its best, but we can do more. Uh, it hasn't gotten to the point where any foreign investor will beat his chest and say he wants to invest in Nigeria for now, or to be able to do the right. Look at the problem of um, minimum wage. Those that are going to work in those companies are not going, are they, are they not going to be part of the more we are talking about. So those are some of the issues we are looking at. So um, I totally agree uh, with the Minister of uh, uh, Finance that yes, Nigeria is a heaven for investment, but to have put on the right thing to be able to attract this foreign investment, that is the, the question that needs to be answered. All right, let's just take this final one from The Guardian quickly. And it says, piecemeal restructuring. Roe as House revives single six-year tenure bill after four failed attempt. What's your take on this one? Rotation, um, uh, six year is six years not a long time for us to be able to, because I think at the end of the day, we, we want to be able to know what the, the capability of we, we, if it's the president or the governor, and six years for them to be the president or the governor, isn't that a long time? But what yeah, do you well, think well, about well, this? Well, one term, anyway. Yeah, one term, though. Tenure, tenure is not our problem. Tenure is not our problem. Our problem is attitudinal. If we don't have the right set of people, a right set of minds, if we make, make it in three, three months, this same set of politicians will ruin it. It's not, so it's not if you are giving somebody, whether it's six months, one year, one, six years tenure. This correct trait of Nigerian politicians are the most selfish I ever. They are one of the most selfish in the world that um, they, 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 tenure is not their problem. If you say we use it from two times of eight, uh, two times of four years, then they use that six years, six years to steal what they want to steal in, mm -hmm. in, in eight years. If you understand what I mean, yeah. they will use that six years since they know they are not coming back. They will steal for themselves, steal for their children, steal for their grandchildren, and children on moon. So for me, 
it is not a whether we are the, yes I, I personally was thinking that we should deviate from the bicameral legislation as we have it uh, and just have a single uh, uh, legislative um, I've already said that we don't need the House of Representatives and Senate they are practically uh, doing the same thing so and we are wasting money at the National Assembly if it's the House of Representatives they want to retain five if it's the if the uh, if the Senate want to, want to retain fine, but let us do it because if you see how much is being budgeted to uh, service uh, these uh, selfish uh, politicians, then you know that um, it's neither here nor there. So for me, it's not a question of tenure or six years. Is it not the same people that we have in current the current in current government or government uh, since nineteen? This is twenty five years of non stop democracy since nineteen ninety nine. What has changed? Nothing has changed. So, for me, um, I am not a strong advocate of this so called uh, CC1 tenure. It doesn't make any sense to me. Until our politicians decide to do the right thing, they go and travel across the globe and see the way things are done. How, people, how politicians are impacting the lives of their people. But they cannot they enjoy, enjoy those facilities. They come and they cannot replicate the same. They rather have their selfish interests take over and they want to steal for themselves and the generation is on board until our politicians decide to do the need to and change their attitudes towards Nigeria and see themselves as servants of the people and not lords. Because these are people that we, we employ them. We Nigerians employ them to serve us. But what is it? They are, they are taking us to serve them. When you see a, 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 a legislator legislati getting a, 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 a jeep for 150 million and is telling you that 60,000 Naira is the right thing for an average Nigerian. What do you make of that? They buy it of 150 million to ride on roads that we, that we Nigerians destroy. That we, that we now, mm -hmm. don't we destroy them. Uh -huh. so, uh, so I totally disagree with uh, the advocates of that five legislators, I mean, five of House of Representatives that are advocating for this, you know, or whatever. It does not make any sense to me. They then change their mindset, whether it's two time or one time. If you're going through it. some people can make an impact can make an impact within two years yeah. and the people will see the impact we've made yeah. but some people some of them will be there for eight years and practically they will do nothing so giving them an extra two years is for one thing is like just giving them a blank check to pass to those guys i i totally disagree with that um, I, all right um this is where we have to wrap it up on this segment chris we want to say thank you for coming thank you very much for having me have thank, a wonderful you. Yeah. thank you thank you Thank you. All right, we're speaking with Chris Kennedy Wander. He's a member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK. We'll go on a short break, and when we return, we'll continue the conversation on this six year tenure that the reps are proposing. Please stay with us.